Hi, John McElroy here talking all things automotive. And in this video, I want to talk about why electric vehicles just became a lot more important than they were only two weeks ago. It's not as if EVs were not important before. It's just that in the last two weeks, two things happened that are going to make EVs a critical component of national security for the United States. Up to now, the emphasis on electrics has all been about fighting climate change. Automakers are committed to achieving carbon neutrality by 2050, and EVs are the only way to get there. The experts tell me hybrids and even plug-in hybrids cannot get you to carbon neutrality. Even so, the internal combustion engine is not going away anytime soon. In developing markets like Africa, South America, and Southeast Asia, the IC engine is going to be around deep into this century. If you think the U.S. or Europe have infrastructure problems to convert to EVs, those other regions of the world are even farther behind. And even if sales of new ICE cars get banned in Europe and in California in 2035, we're still going to have ICE vehicles on the road for decades to come. Here's why. In the U.S., it takes about 22 years to turn the fleet over. What that means is that all the bright and shiny new cars and trucks and vans that are rolling off the assembly lines today will not be fully off the roads and scrapped until 2045. And the ones that get sold in 2035 will not be off the roads until 2057. So that's why it's easy for me to predict that oil, gasoline, and diesel are going to be around for a long time to come, even well after the sales of new ICE vehicles get banned. And this is why a recent headline in the Wall Street Journal should have set off alarm bells across the American auto industry, as well as the national security establishment. The journal reported that fracking, the fracking boom, is coming to an end. Frackers are not getting the gushers like they did just a few years ago, and the journal says they've already drained their best wells. The journal quoted Ryan Lance, he's the CEO of ConocoPhillips, as saying, the world is going back to a world that we had in the 70s and 80s. He warned that OPEC would soon supply more of the world's oil. According to the Wall Street Journal, the easy oil to get from fracking will be used up in about seven or eight years. Remember, in just the last decade, fracking is what converted the United States from a net energy importer to a net energy exporter. It's a key reason why Europe was able to go tell Vladimir Putin to shove it and cut off imports of Russian oil and gas. It's why the U.S. was able to supply Europe for so much of what it needs. Think about it. Where would Ukraine be today if Russia was able to hold Europe hostage because the U.S. could not supply Europe with what it needs? Fracking is what the U.S. greatly reduced its dependence on OPEC and on the Middle East. It's had major geopolitical reverberations and let the U.S. become master of its own destiny in energy supplies. Fracking for natural gas also let the U.S. slash the amount of coal it uses to generate electricity. Only a decade ago, coal accounted for nearly half of all electric generation in the U.S. Today, it's down to 22%. All that coal was replaced by cheap natural gas from fracking. So if the fracking boom is coming to a close, where does that leave the U.S.? Okay, I mentioned two major developments in the last two weeks. The first was that Wall Street Journal report on fracking. The next one was the announcement that China brokered an agreement between Iran and Saudi Arabia to restore political relations. The last thing the U.S. and its allies need is China getting involved in the Middle East, especially as a go-between with Iran and Saudi Arabia. Remember what the CEO of ConocoPhillips said, that we're going to become more dependent on OPEC. Saudi Arabia is the number one producer in OPEC, and Iran, even with all the sanctions imposed on it, is number five. Who wants to become more dependent on them? I think that these two developments probably played a role in why President Biden decided to allow drilling for oil in the pristine Arctic region of Alaska. It's what they call the Willow Project. Some say Biden did this to appeal to center-right independent voters, who he hopes to lure in, all with an eye on next year's presidential election. And maybe that's right. 
But I think Biden had to do something to show the Saudis and Iran and China that the U.S. was prepared to do anything to maintain its strength in energy production and support our allies in Europe. And besides, for every center-right independent voter that Biden's move may appeal to, you're going to have two liberal environmentalists who are infuriated that he's allowing drilling in the Arctic. Look, I don't like the idea either, but to me it's better than becoming dependent on OPEC again, especially if China is going to have a lot more clout in the Middle East. And that's why I believe electric cars just became a lot more important in the last two weeks. The faster we can convert the fleet to running on electricity, the less oil we need, the less we need to depend on OPEC. And electricity can be made from any energy source. Coal, oil, gas, wind, the sun, hydro, whatever. EVs can rely on any energy source. IC cars are pretty much dependent on oil. And obviously, this goes beyond cars. We need all sectors of the economy to become less dependent on fossil fuels. Transportation, agriculture, construction, mining, manufacturing, you name it. But I focus on automotive, which is why I've made this all about EVs. And that's why I say EVs just became even more important than they were just two weeks ago.